In short, and then we'll go into the detail in regards to the research in a second. What the researchers did was this. They noticed a correlation between individuals recruited for a study in Thailand, 200 individuals in particular. Of those 200 individuals, 101 were basically occupied, I don't want to say infected, because occupied by friendly bacteria of the bacillus family. What ended up happening, they discovered, this correlation is those that were colonized with bacillus in the nasal passageway or gut were not, zero of them, were colonized by Staphylococcus aureus. That was the correlation. The researchers then wanted to discover why did this particular strain, in particular I should say, Bacillus subtilis, inhibited infection of Staphylococcus aureus, which some of you may recognize as part of the immersive methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And this is what they discovered. They discovered that Bacillus subtilis helped produce a lipopeptide, this part's important because it goes into how it works, uh, called fungusin. This fungusin generally interfered with something referred to as quorum sensing, basically interfered with the communication of the Staphylococcus or aureus and therefore inhibited infection. In this case, zero populations in those individuals that were occupied by the friendly bacteria from the Bacillus family. So with that in mind, let's proceed into the research as follows. I want to get that way part of the beginning because it's kind of long, so you can end it there if that's all the information you need. You want to know a little bit more? Now we begin. In the research study, NIH study finds probiotic bacillus eliminates Staphylococcus bacteria. A new study from the National Institute of Health Scientists, and I will slow down during the important parts. And their Thai colleagues show that a good bacterium commonly found in probiotic digestive supplements help eliminate the Staphylococcus aureus, a type of bacteria that can cause serious antibiotic resistant infections. The research is led by scientists at the NIH's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, from now on be known as NIA unexpectedly found that bacillus bacteria prevented Staphylococcus aureus bacteria from growing in the gut and nose of healthy individuals. I like that because unexpected, it was an unexpected finding. Staphylococcus infections cause tens of thousands of deaths worldwide each year. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA is similar to many people as a cause of serious disease. Less well known is Staphylococcus aureus can live in the nose or the gut without causing any harm. However, if the skin barrier is broken or the immune system compromised, these colonizing bacteria can cause serious infection. One strategy to prevent staph infections is to eliminate Staphylococcus aureus colonization. However, some decolonization strategies are controversial because they require considerable amounts of topical antibiotics and have limited success, probably because they target only the nose and bacteria quickly recolonize the gut. Now the study in regard to the correlation, which I mentioned earlier. The scientists recruited 200 volunteers in rural Thailand for study this population. They speculated it would not be as affected by food sterilization or antibiotics as people in highly developed urban areas. The scientists first analyzed fecal samples from each of the study participants for bacteria correlated with the absence of Staphylococcus aureus from uh, basically to do where this is. They found 101 samples positive for bacillus primarily Bacillus subtilis. They found mixed with other bacteria many probiotic supplements. Bacillus bacteria form spores that can survive harsh environments and commonly are ingested naturally with vegetables, allowing them to temporarily to grow in the intestines. The, the scientists then sampled the 200 people for Staphylococcus aureus in the gut, 25 positive and nose 26 positive. Strikingly, they found no Staphylococcus aureus in any of the samples where bacillus were present. Now, why? Now they're trying to form a causal argument. Why is this occurring? To further validate their findings, the scientists colonized the gut of mice with Staphylococcus aureus and fed them bacillus subtilis, spores to mimic probiotic intake. Probiotic bacillus was given every two days, eliminated, or I should say eliminated, I broke up my sentence there, eliminated, so repeat, Probiotic bacillus given every two days eliminated Staphylococcus aureus in the guts of mice. The same test used in bacillus where fungicin, remember I mentioned earlier, uh, was a lipopeptide, production had been removed and had no effect. So aureus grew as expected. That's where the fungicin comes in. All right, 
So what they did is they took the fengusin uh, lipopeptide away from basically the bacillus to see if that was the reason why uh, bacillus has such a powerful effect of helping reduce Staphylococcus aureus. And that fengusin did play a role. So when they removed it, the bacillus on its own couldn't do it. The fengusin back in there, it did the job to proceed. Now we're going to go to the abstract because it's a little bit more detail and it kind of confirms what it basically comes out in this public release. However, the mechanisms that underlies the effect remain poorly understood. Now the causal again. Here report that the consumption of probiotic bacillus bacteria comprehensively, comprehensively abolished colonization by the dam damage, damaging, apologize, dangerous pathogen Staphylococcus aureus in the rural Thai population. We show, the researchers, I'm just quoting, that, or, that basically a widespread cast, class of bacillus, the fengusin, lip bacillus lipopeptide, the fengusins, eliminates Staphylococcus aureus by inhibiting Staphylococcus aureum, aureus quorum sensing, a process through which bacteria respond to their population density by altering gene regulation. According to the researchers, our study presents a detailed molecular mechanism that underlies the importance of probiotic nutrition in reducing infectious disease. We also provide evidence that supports the biological significance of probiotic bacterial interference in humans, this is in a good way, and show that such interference can be achieved by blocking a pathogen's signaling system, quorum sensing. Furthermore, our findings suggest a probiotic-based method for Staphylococcus aureus decolonization and new ways to fight Staphylococcus aureus infections. To conclude, the NIAID, the Infectious and Allergy Diseases, and Thai scientists next plan to test whether a probiotic product that contains only bacillus uh, subtilis, main reason being they're trying to find out the, the actual uh, basically uh, effect of what part of the bacillus family is actually doing the job. And this is important because it may have a synergistic effect with other species of that particular family itself. So they want to see if this is just bacillus subtilis or is it working in partnership with some other uh, unknown species so far. But to proceed, can eliminate Staphylococcus aureus in people. They plan to enroll more Thai volunteers for the project and let's go to the researchers and move to the end to quote, Ultimately, according to the researchers, we hope to determine if a simple probiotic regimen can be used to reduce MRSA infection rates in hospitals. So, really cool research in regard to a couple of different things. The researchers found an unexpected finding. The unexpected finding being that those individuals that were inhabited by Bacillus subtilis were not inhabited by Staphylococcus aureus. And from there, they wanted to find why and develop a causal reasoning, I should say, I don't want to use the word argument, into how it may be doing its job. They did find out that Bacillus subtilis helps with a lipopeptide known as fungusin, and that interferes with quorum sensing. Now, for further studies, they got to make sure there's no other uh, aliases involved in this wonderful, wonderful effect of potentially benefiting tens of thousands of people and reducing and or eliminating MRSA infections. Again, this is Rapture Channel signing off. I apologize, it's a little long. Missed been out a couple lines there. But in any case, hope you find this information of use. DOI citation will be listed so you can follow it to the study itself. And as always, thank you very much for listening and look forward to seeing you all again next week. See you then, bye.